Okay, good shot. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmakers 1490 WDAN. Linda Bolton, back again in the studio as I told you yesterday. It's a whole lot more fun being here than on a surgery table at Carl, so I'll take this any day of the week. Uh, so glad to be back. And, and so joining me today, uh, one of our favorites, one of the guys we really enjoy talking to because he's so talented, has a strange mind and that always appeals to us. We <laughs> We like that a lot. Uh, Jake Aurelius is here. Good morning, Jake. Thank you so much <laughs> for welcome. that lovely introduction. <laughs> Thank you for you having go. me back. Uh, Jake is here to talk about uh, his video projects, as he always does, and he has a lot of talent, a lot of things to talk about. Joining him are Brian Morris and Chloe Miller, and good morning to both of you, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good. All right, Jake. So Saturday's big day for you. That's right. We're doing a Halloween screening of my independent feature film, The Stripper, Stripper Ripper, down at Vintage Villains, 126 North Vermillion. And um, we've got two screenings this time, a matinee at 4 p.m. and an evening screening at 8 p.m. Last time uh, was kind of a dud because we, we, thing, were, we were here yeah. to promote yeah. the screening and then we got hit with that major blizzard yep. that night yep, of, the, of the screening. So, um, but I did hear from a lot of people during that time frame who said that they, you know, couldn't make it to the 8 p.m. screening for whatever reason. They've got kids. They don't like to be out super late. So that's why I decided to do a matinee this time at 4 p.m. That's good. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a good time for folks. They can go, go to the screening, enjoy it, and then go out to eat yeah. and go home and be good. Yep. So, tell us about this project. Uh, this, geez, this it was about a year ago that we did the premiere of the film. I was going to say, because yeah. it's been around for yes, a while. <laughs> yes, and, um, you know, it's Let's remind everybody. apropos for Halloween. It's a horror movie spoof. Um, it, you know, don't let the title fool you, the gritty title, The Stripper Ripper. It's a family-friendly film. Um, it's basically a, uh, a horror film, but instead of the victims getting murdered per, you know, your typical horror movie, they get hit with a pie. So it's a slapstick, Three Stooges, Bozo Circus type of um, twist to the horror movie genre. Taking some of the ugliness away and throwing pies. Yes, <laughs> and with a ton of pop culture references. I mean, we poke fun at Halloween. That's one of the major um, things that we, the films that we spoof. Halloween, The Town That Dreaded Sundown, The Blues Brothers, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Ghostbusters, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, a lot of films. Um, we, we parody them because we love them, and people seem to really like the fact that uh, when we dropped a reference like that, when they watched the, the, the film, they seem to really enjoy those references. Absolutely. So, Chloe, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, and then what you do in the, in the video of the film. Oh, boy. I know, um, that was a lot. I'm sorry. I should have given you notes. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'm just senior in high school. I don't really do much besides community theater, of course, and just things like this. I, in the film, um, I'm, my character is introduced more towards the end, and she's more of a, she's the one that takes down Stripper River himself. Whoa! Yes. Kind of. That's a big part. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I was going to say, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> It's well, you just took the fun out of that one. Chloe's Sorry. name in the film is Lori, per Lori from Halloween, and um, she is introduced earlier in the film because we spoofed the hedge scene in Halloween when the girls are walking down the street and they see Michael Myers pop out from behind the hedge. So that's how Chloe's introduced very briefly, and then at the end, it's uh, the scene at Lori's house, where the stripper ripper enters, kind of like Michael Myers, and Never um, to leave again. and Sean Husseini, he plays <laughs> Doctor Loomis. He bursts into the house to save the day, and um, so and in the scene with you in the house, there's a lot going on there because you know you're reading um, the Clover Book, which is Men, Women, and Chainsaws, which talks about how women are portrayed in horror movies, and I put that book in there because I had to read it in college. And um, it, you know, it references what we're spoofing, and then you're also listening to the old time oh, to an old time radio with a, uh, a news broadcaster who is me, uh, you know, spoofing the uh, the news broadcaster on the radio from uh, the Night of the Living Dead, and then that segues into a spoof of the Shadow Radio Show. Oh, cool. So there's there's a lot going on in yeah. in Chloe's scene. So Chloe, tell us. I mean, obviously you're a senior in high school. And you are involved in theater, so what other things have you done? Share that with us. Um, 
I've been involved in the TTCD product, uh, uh, production of High School Musical. Which is Teen Theater Company of Danville. Mm -hmm. Love them dearly. Um, back when Rocky was at the Fisher, I was ensemble for that. And I've done a few DLO shows, and that's, I think that's about it. So why, why are you in theater? Why do you like it? What do you get out of it? What does it mean to you? How does it affect your life? Yada, yada. I mean, it makes people happy watching it or being in it, and I, I guess it's a different perspective than the audience sees, because you just, you're just up there making people happy, basically. That's cool. For an hour, maybe two at a time. Oh, I love that. That's cool. Hey, Brian, you've been around for a day or two. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could go down your list of theater, but probably we just want to do the highlights or we'd be here all day. Yeah, well, probably. <laughs> well, I don't know how highlight they'd be, but... Uh... <laughs> No, tell us a little bit about you and how you got involved in theater, first of all. Uh, I was tricked into it. it that's, um, that usually works. Yeah, I was uh, lured into a production of uh, DLO's Jekyll and Hyde about ten years ago. And when I went to the studio to uh, protest, um, someone put some papers into my hand and I was introduced as the director's backside saver. <laughs> So I, I couldn't back out from that point. Uh, I had that job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that led to a, a whole a whole string of uh, wonderful experiences with DLO and with uh, Red Mask, where you and I worked together yeah, one yeah, time. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And um, and now I've taken my show on the road to um, Lafayette, Indiana, where I've done a couple of productions over there. Um, they know me for my green fingernails, having done Lacaja Fall over <laughs> here. Um, and I've also segued into movies, you know, not just Jake's, but um, I've also done some horror films for an outfit called Moonlight Films out of Linton, Indiana. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I haven't done a thing. They haven't done a thing. You've just been sitting around. <laughs> Pretty you know, much. You know. I didn't write all day. That's all I did. Well, you know, that's somebody's got to do that. That's, that's where it all starts, with the writing. And that brings me back to you, Jake. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get, and I know you've told us before, but share again. How did you get involved in this? How did you get so far into this, we'll never bring you back? Well, um, the clown character started in my first fiction book, which is a sto short story collection called Dead Wrestlers, Broken Necks, and the Women Who Screwed Me Over. And um, <laughs> I like my titles to be memorable. I know, Hence the stripper do. ripper, you know. <laughs> no, um, gritty, memorable, and something that you'll just, you know, it will just stick with you forever. Um, so the clown kind of, I just like the name of the clown, and so in my, in my follow-up book, We Leave With Our Guns Out, and then a little crime fiction book that I wrote called Living Well's The Best Revenge, I mentioned the clown as well. And around that time, I decided, um, I was actually writing a short story about um, taking the clown from just being referenced in the books to a short story of his own, where he was going to be a stand-up comedian. And the gimmick was going to be everyone thought he was dressed like a clown, but that's how he was born, and no one ever believed him. And as I was writing this, it just kind of hit me, you know, I think I'll just go up on stage and perform this myself. And that's what started the whole clown thing, and I've been dressing like a clown ever since. And it will be Ripper the Clown's sixth birthday tomorrow, Halloween. Yes. Oh, how perfect. Yeah, you got to love it. I'm telling you, the man's mind is just fascinating to me. I truly enjoy hearing you know, what Jake has to say, and I think you're going to enjoy. Remember his uh, showing of the the. The Stripper Ripper. The Stripper Ripper. You'd think I'd be able to, to remember that. 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock on this Saturday at Vintage Villains in downtown Danville. We'll be back in just a moment. The Newsmakers 1490 WDAN. Welcome back to Newsmakers 1490 WDAN. Linda Bolton in the studio this morning with Jake Aurelius, one of our genuine uh, talented folks that is a uh, new edge, new, new world kind of uh, thinking. Uh, has come up with some some really interesting stuff, both uh, writing and uh, producing videos. And uh, so his uh, latest Stripper Ripper video will be shown uh, this Saturday at 4 and at 8 in downtown Danville. It was all shot locally, all local people. Um, and it, uh, it kind of spoofs all of your scary Halloween movies and, and uh, just has a good time with them. So instead of getting shot or chopped up, uh, people get pies in the face, so it's a, it's a family-friendly yes, <laughs> yes. kind, of, kind of approach. So with me is Jake Aurelius, the genius behind all of this, and also Chloe Miller and Brian Morris, who are in the film. 
So uh, you had some interesting stuff with Brian on this film, right? Yes. Um, I, had a, I think I emailed Brian and said, hey, do you want to be in the film? And I really had nothing written for you, Brian. Like, I just wanted to know if you wanted to be in the film. It was an oh, and, by the way. And, yeah. and we'll Brian out. replied and said, yes, and you, you volunteer to get hit in the face with a pie. Mm -hmm. Well, the theme of the film is, much like your typical horror movie, I wanted all the victims to be female because that's what, you know, the horror movie is. Again, with pies and not violence. And um, there's only one male that gets hit with a pie at the end. That's Dr. Loomis. And I didn't want to break that trend. So I told, you know, when someone volunteers to get hit in the face with a pie, you, you don't turn, turn, you can't turn that yeah, down. There's something and wrong with me. Yeah. Just yeah. Well, we know wrong. that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's no secret. secret. Well known. So I told Brian, I'm like, I'll think about it. I'll figure something out. And like a day or so later, I had a dream. And it was what his role was and how he would get hit with a pie. And I woke up in the middle of the night and wrote down the general idea. And the next morning, I got up and I wrote the script and I told him I've got his part. And um, it was just an amazing scene to film. We filmed it at Cafe 13. I have to say, uh, sponsoring the screenings, Cafe 13 and the Gold Rush Palm Brokers, both downtown businesses, both all good friends of mine, great people. And we filmed Brian's scene at Cafe 13. And I was pied in front of the gold rush. You were. Well. You were. <laughs> so it you ties in. in. Yes. Yes. advertising yes. there. Um, and Jason Allen from Cafe 13, he's in the scene with Brian as well. And we just had so much fun filming that scene. It was like we would get done with a take and everyone would start laughing. Yeah. Everyone helping and, you know, crew. And it was just it, when we were done, when we were walking down the alley, from the gold rush after Brian got pied, I would just it just hit me. It was just really kind of sad because I'm like it was the last scene of the film, and I was like, oh, it's all over, and I'm gonna have to stop spending time with all these amazing fun people. And um, so that that was that was it was an amazing day, but that there was like a little tinge of sadness there because it was all over at that point. Yeah. Jake, one of the things about the stuff that you do, you you uh, you're very serious about wanting that to be local and to use local people, you know, local actors, shoot in local businesses, local areas of the community. That all matters a lot to you. Oh, it does. Talk I think about that. I think it's really important to, you know, for the film. It was filmed in over 20 local locations and I think that's it's good for the people who are allowing me to film there, but it's also fun for the audience. And it's the same thing with our, all of our players. Most of them are local. Um, the only two that I can think of off the top of my head that aren't Philo Barnhart, the, um, the di former Disney animator, he did a voiceover role, and then John Borowski, um, he's an author and a filmmaker from Chicago, and he was also in uh, the, the American Ripper show on the History Channel. They both make little cameos in the film. Everyone else, I believe, is local, uh, just off the top of my head, and I think that's good too, because when people see the film, it, it's, it's special for people local to see yeah, places that they, is, yeah. they frequent, people they know, and, um, you know, so people watching it outside the community, they won't, you know, they'll enjoy the film for what it is, but then the, the local people, they'll enjoy it uh, maybe a step further because they know people or they, you know, they're familiar with certain businesses or locations. So let's just take a moment, I want to talk to, to Chloe and Brian again, but let's just take a moment, Jake. And, and go back to little Jake, when he was growing up. <laughs> Is this what J little Jake wanted to do? Did little Jake envision that crazy clown? I, I mean, was, how did this all come together? But, you know, I always loved wrestling and pro wrestling and the gimmicks involved. So when I started doing the comedy, um, it was like me performing a, a wrestling character on the stage. But, you know, no, I would have never envisioned this. But you mentioned the childhood, there's so much of my childhood in this character, you know, Ernest from, you know, er Jim Varney is Ernest and Bozo and uh, that type of thing, Mr. T, those type of characters that stood out, I know that, that those influenced me along with wrestling and, um, you know, I had never, no, I had never had been on stage before and when people who knew me, friends and family, heard I was doing something on stage, they just couldn't believe it and that's why I initially made the character angry because I knew that I would be very, very nervous on stage and I needed a way to mask the nervousness. Use the anger. So I, yeah. I, I made him angry and and animated that way because if anyone heard my voice cracking or saw, saw me shaking they would think it was part of the gimmick when it was actually uh, my nervousness so that's kind of how I masked my what I knew would be stage fright early on. Chloe has being involved in the theater helped you as as you develop as a into an adulthood I mean uh, teenage years are often very difficult <laughs> Last I checked. Oh, they still uh, are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that had changed. But I mean, seriously, 
because uh, to me, having been involved in the, th I think that helps a lot get past some of that insecurity that you most of us feel, um, especially theater people feel, um, to be on stage and then to be other people and other characters. Is that true for you? It is true. I mean, before I started theater, I was just, I was that quiet kid that just sat in the black, that sat in the back of the room, just head down, not wanting to look up, make eye contact with anyone. Now it's just like... I, a little more confidence? A little more confidence, a little more outgoing. Honestly, it's, it's good for anyone. It's interesting, uh, I, I would guess, and I think it is, Brian, maybe you agree, um, that actually acting uh, or being involved in the theater can actually make you more comfortable being you. I would completely agree with that. Um, also, in my day job, as I call it, of being a full-time writer, um, I do a lot of shows where I have to meet a bunch of strangers mm -hmm. and convince them that I'm the greatest author ever. <laughs> um, so having the, uh, the kind of personality I try to be outgoing, try to be positive when I meet these people, make it a good experience for them just to have met me. And I don't mean that in any no, sort no, of No, 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 it's in the way. pot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but acting has really helped that quite a bit where I am comfortable in my own skin, finally. Plus, it's nice to know that, like, I swore off acting in high school. Um, I thought I never... I'm going to work out for you. <laughs> um, badly the last 10 years. Uh, but, no, I've also made a whole bunch of you know, great friends in the process and uh, learned a lot about myself and learned that I really... The only limits I have are those I impose on myself. Absolutely. And I think acting and, and the theater in general does help you do that. We'll be back in just a moment. Newsmakers 1490 WDAN. Oh golly, I love doing this show. Uh, welcome back to Newsmakers 1490 WDAN. Linda Bolton in the studio and with me today are Jake Aurelius, one of the genuine talented folks that live in our community and we are blessed with a lot of talented people. Jake has a mind of his own, uh, interesting guy with a lot of talents and a lot of interest in a lot of area, uh, areas, particularly in making videos. His most recent video, The Stripper Ripper, yes. will be shown at 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock at Vintage Villains in downtown Danville this Saturday. Yes. Uh, and, and Completely the, shot locally, yep. local talent, come and enjoy. It's a takeoff and a spoof of all those scary Halloween movies, but instead of people getting ripped apart and stabbed and strangled and shot and all that stuff, they get pies in the face. So. Yep. Completely family friendly, Absolutely. and we have kids in the film. And um, what's the cost to get in? Jake? It's free. free. And See, if you that's like, a good cost. yeah, if you'd like to make a donation to you know to help uh, cover costs of putting on the event, you can feel free to do so. If not, that's cool too. So again, four and eight on Saturday. Yep. Also yep. with me are Chloe Miller and Brian Morris, who are both in the video, um, and we've been talking to them a little bit about their acting backgrounds and about what they do in the film. Um, you've got a lot of things going on, Jake. Um, mm -hmm. Jake's been involved in the downtown farmer's market and has other videos lined up. He's a writer. Um, lots of things going on. And I, yep. I know you needed to mention a couple of things. Yep. Oh, well, uh, first, back on the screening, check out the trailer on Facebook. I think it's got about 7,000 views at this point. So oh, it's good. doing pretty well. And then for all the details, you can go to the Facebook event page. Um, so, um, and... Yes, I am working on a new project. We were going to actually wrote the the script for the sequel to this film, like the day after we had the premiere. Um, and then I got food poisoning. Darnest <laughs> things will slow and, you down. And at that point, I started working on a new project because I felt as though it was it needed to take precedence over filming the sequel. So eventually, we'll get to the sequel. It has it's this kind of the same theme, obviously, but with a different. This one's a horror theme. This one's probably going to be more like a 1970s detective type of spoof. Oh, fun. Um, that type of thing. But um, I am working on a new project regarding Dick and Jerry Van Dyke. So I wanted to tell your listeners, if you knew either the Van Dyke brothers, if you went to school with them, if you know someone who went to school with them, if you ever met them, please email me, and I'll give you the details, and I'd love to talk to you. My email is ripperthetlown at gmail.com. Again, RipperTheClown at gmail.com. Very simple, no dots, no dashes, just RipperTheClown at gmail.com. And again, that's for anybody that actually um, grew up with the Van Dykes or has, you, if you have family members who did or went to school with them, uh, almost everybody that did do that 
does have memories. Yes. It's hard to find anybody that went to school with Dick and Jerry or associated with them that don't have very vivid memories uh, to share. So please let them know that uh, Jake is working on a project that will involve the, the Van Dykes and he could really use your help. So please reach out to him. So uh, again, free showing. You don't even have to pay anything. If you want to donate, it would be really nice to help offset the cost. But again, um, this idea of getting to watch a, uh, go watch a video that's a spoof in the first place. You don't have to take seriously. You can just enjoy a spoof of Halloween horror movies. Um, and, and and it's been filmed right in your own hometown and with uh, local people that you know. Kind of a cool thing. Yeah. Did you always envision it to be that way or did it just kind of happen? Initially it was just going to be like a 30 minute deal and slowly but surely it turned into a close to a 90 minute film. But yeah, that's how I always envisioned it. It needed to be filmed local so that, you know, again, local people could enjoy it on a different level. Brian, talk a minute about uh, about local theater because you you have been involved in it and you've seen it from many different angles, yeah. many different organizations. True. And so, talk a little bit about what what community theater actually means to a community because I don't think we acknowledge that enough. I think the main strength of a uh, community theater is that it gives the local people who have wanted to get on stage. Maybe they envision themselves as being on the silver screen, or they just want to have a creative outlet, or maybe they just want to learn a whole new set of skills that go along with theater, not all of which involve being on the stage itself. Um, um, people like us who have been on stage worship the people that work it behind Amen. the scenes because we couldn't put on the, this whole show without them. And so I think um, a community strength is largely uh, mirrored in how strong its arts um, presence happens to be. And Danville is blessed to have, you know, theater groups, uh, a symphony orchestra, all kinds of great creative things going on, which is one of the things that uh, keeps br bringing me back to Danville over Absolutely. and over again. All right, Jake, go over the important info one more time before it kicks us out. Okay, we're doing two Halloween screenings of the Stripper Ripper at Vintage Villains this Saturday. We're sponsored by Cafe 13 and Gold Rush, both downtown. Vintage Villains is at 126 North Vermilion, and we're doing a matinee screening at 4 and an evening screening at 8. And it's free. And it's exciting because it's new video, it's new opportunities. We're seeing new growth in theater, young people getting involved. It's an exciting time, it really is, and I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of everybody that's putting in so much effort. You in particular, but the teen theater group and so many folks that are working so hard to broaden our scope of, of art right here in our own community. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We look forward to Saturday, 4 and 8 o'clock, Vintage Villains. Be there. Tomorrow, please join me. Trooper Tracy Lillard will be here from Illinois State Police. Cannot wait to see her. Have not talked to her in ages, so looking forward to, uh, I'm sure it'll be a nonstop conversation. So please join us on Newsmakers 1490, WDAN. I'm Linda Bolton.